Okay, day 189, this is part five. Heading to Minneapolis, St. Paul now. Um, this is the follow-up on the Rolling Stone hit piece thing. Uh, whispers from sources in New York that it's gonna be vigilantes of the internet. So I'm not gonna be the sole, you know, one of maybe five or six examples. Vigilantes of the internet endangering the lives of innocent Muslims. Uh, again, I'm not going to go through it. Not a Muslim thing, not a Pakistani thing, not a Pakistani uh, extremist thing. It's Pakistani extremists with triple garroting or double garroting is with murders 30 miles away. So, again, I'm not trying to uh, demean Pakistani uh, extremist uh, groups that teach garroting. I just want to know if there's the DNA. I don't know why Lee's, Lee's, whatever his name is, Lee's, the police chief, won't release the DNA in that case in Delphi. Remove all doubt. If, if it's white guys, great. If it's black guys, great. If it's Hispanic guys, great. If it's Muslim guys, great. Uh, at least we know we have the data. If it's garroting, great. Um, the data is going to come out. Uh, and so this this attack by Rolling Stone saying somehow this is a somehow an attack on, on all Islam is completely fallacious and I think I have enough videos out now but I'm just trying I, I'm hearing it's gonna come out next week so I'm just uh, priming for this as other journalists and so forth look into uh, me and my work and what I'm doing um, so that's that I'm gonna move on to a different topic though this is on the area of the journalism school thing, and I know a lot of professors out there are trying to, you know, use like the Lee Stranahan uh, you know, tremendous theory and practice that he's developed to develop a curriculum for journalism school. And there, and a lot of uh, folks are talking about using my stuff as more the kind of street journalism, um, instinct journalism, Colombo journalism, whatever you want to call it. Um, open source journalism, opium media research journalism, lots of different names. Um, one of the things I wanted to do was in the data sciences area, if someone, uh, someone's mentioned Maltigo before, and before we get off on the, this is a Mossad op and, and all that, no, uh, well, okay, uh, Maltigo code may have spent some time in, in uh, Ben Gurion University, may have spent some time in Beersheba, but it's in South Africa now, and so let's not just push Maltigo down because it may have some Mossad roots. Um, but what I would like to do is scrape all of the, I'll get back to uh, Maltigo, uh, but what I'd like to do is scrape all of the text uh, metadata that some tremendous person out there has done metadata for all of the different uh, episodes, all 412 or what, 415 or 20. Um, and I'd like to scrape all the comments as well. Uh, and I'd like to scrape all the comments on all the slides throughout perpetuity that have occurred from, from my presentation on Google Docs. And I'd like to scrape all the um, comments on Facebook as well and put them all into a body of knowledge or a body of work or an opus or whatever you want to call it that can be scanned and searched because what I'd like to do is then develop what's known as entity analysis or entity identification. Go through and mark those key phrases, you know, Frank Justra, you know, Frank K. Justra, Frank Just Enterprise Partners, um, et cetera, for later on link analysis. Now, the, the really cool thing about Maltigo is when you once you identify your entities, then you have what they call transforms. And your transforms are kind of like your fast Fourier transforms, they, you know, X comes in one side and Y comes out the other. So one of the cool transforms is email. So if I say, oh, George with no E dot web at gmail.com, then it'll go and say, oh, here's George link LinkedIn. Here's his Facebook. Here's his uh, uh, Gmail account. Here's his uh, Google Plus profile. Um, you know, all the metadata will come back. And then, oh, and well, by the way, here's all his friends. And then we can start doing link analysis on people who share the same friends, people who like things amongst each other and so forth with Multigo. That all those transforms are built into Multigo, those social transforms. And there's going to be other ones as well as far as if you are a registered agent like Mahmood, 
if you're a registered agent like Mahmood for one of the Awan Brothers companies, then we're going to be able to see all the other places you're a registered agent. We're going to be able to see if you're a registered agent for ISI as well. Uh, so that type of analysis. And, and, and hopefully, you know, hopefully I make it out of this thing. Um, but if I don't, I would like to leave some kind of legacy toward the universities that this isn't just a, an immediacy thing. This isn't just happening in the real time. It is the working uh, draft of history, the kind of rough draft of history kind of thing too, because this can be an input into uh, more refined journalism. You know, we've got tremendous uh, citations here. We got a tremendous number of links. I think the, somebody went through and called all the links once. This is like day 89, and there was like 500 links. Um, so just the, you know, the HTTP links are, are a valuable resource. And as I said before, uh, once you identify the entities, then you can score the entities, then the entities you can rise to the top. Uh, the, you can apply all kinds of different algorithms to the entities, like, um, uh, you know, whether they've been ever been convicted of a crime, whether they've ever, you know, had more than a million dollars donated to a political candidate, all these kind of scoring algorithms that can, from all over the world. So other universities can pick up on the link analysis once it's done and then do their analysis. So that's kind of where I'd like to go. If anybody out there has the kind of technical uh, uh, wherewithal to get that kind of a project done or wants to pursue that through a university, let me know. Thank you very much. Oh yeah, I just went by uh, Fort McCoy you, and where there's a VA hospital. And, and I hope, I just want to hope that these OR facilities are not being reserved and quietly for graveyard shifts, literally graveyard shifts, for foreign uh, dignitaries um, to live an everlasting life with with organs from my brothers with a, just a little bit more melanin than me in Homan Square in Chicago uh, or in uh, or in Minneapolis St. Paul it's equidistant between the two uh, but with what's happening with the VA and still having problems I get this sense that there's a scheduling thing that's happening that's keeping these operating theaters open at night um, and maybe those are off hours anyway, but I just don't like it. I don't like this kind of clandestine covert organ trading. It should be an open process.